What's up guys, Steven here, welcome back to another video. So 2019 is the year 5G, and 5G will change what we call the internet of today. So I've been researching on this topic for the last few months, I was on a lot of conferences, and there's something really big happening in Austria right now. So one of the biggest telecommunication providers acquired one of the biggest cable providers, and together they are pushing 5G. So even though 5G rolls out right now, I think there's still a lot of misinformation on 5G and people actually don't know what 5G is and how it will improve our life. So guys, get ready with me for the truth about 5G. After years of hype about gigabit speeds that will let you download full-length movies in mere seconds, 5G is finally becoming a reality. So this week, I was on the T-Mobile rebranding event in Austria and T-Mobile has acquired UPC and is now called Magenta and they have used this rebranding to also promote 5G. So before we have a look at what 5G is, let's have a look at the past. Now in Austria, internet has been actually lagging behind other countries in the European Union, so it took us quite a lot of time to catch up with that. 5G will offer data rates up to 10 gigabit per second, which is really crazy. But it requires a good and high performing network like a glass fiber network, because what you transfer to the 5G antenna has to be further transported by a super fast network. So it was actually a smart tactical move from T-Mobile to acquire the fiber cable provider UPC to expand the network. Magenta now offers TV, fiber internet, DSL, hybrid, home LT and pure 4G mobile internet with really attractive prices. But the newest contracts are called 5G ready and they are called 5G ready for a reason. But before we talk about that, let's see what 5G actually is. 5G is the fifth generation in cellular networks. The first generation began in the 1990s when cellular networks were being established. The second generation began with the first voice services and text messages. In an advanced mode, called GPRS, even a few data could be sent. The third generation was marked by the first smartphones that could browse the internet. And the current 4G period has seen faster, more reliable cellular networks and phones that can stream content like Netflix, but also with products like the Internet Flex Tariff or hybrid 4G solutions, the way we use home internet has changed. So one big difference of 5G is the wavelength of the signal. 5G is currently operating at higher frequency ranges, which results in a lower reach. That means to establish a big network, you have to have more antennas. When people think about antennas, they think about huge towers. But no, I've seen plenty of 5G antennas at the IFA, and they're actually quite small and go as small as a Wi-Fi router that is placed somewhere in the public. You shouldn't mix up 5 GHz Wi-Fi with 5G. What people call as 5G Wi-Fi is operating at 5 GHz, and that provides more available channels and can typically run much faster, but it has somewhat a shorter range than 2.4 GHz. That's also something we can observe when we have a look at 5G mobile networks. The term millimeter wave in 5G is very popular and it refers to a specific part of the radio frequency spectrum between 24 and 100 GHz, which have a very short wavelength. This section of the spectrum is pretty much unused, so millimeter wave technology aims to greatly increase the amount of bandwidth available. In a nutshell, a lower frequency band covers a much greater distance, but also offers slower data speeds while high frequency bands cover a much smaller area but can carry much more data. So that means that rolling out millimeter wave 5G in a country requires a lot of money because you have to set up a lot of small antenna stations within the area. Also this millimeter wave doesn't penetrate buildings. So how would you use 5G indoors? Well, you don't need a line of sight with a 5G antenna to receive the signal. 5G networks will use beamforming technology to direct waves off and around obstacles to your phone. This works both outdoors by reflecting signals of buildings, as well as indoors by reflecting signals of walls. 
but this millimeter wave technology isn't necessary for 5G. Magenta plans to install 5G on existing 4G frequencies in Austria. So that means that 5G can use the same towers as 4G and has the same distance and wall penetration characteristics as existing 4G networks, but with a lower latency and at greater speed. Just about everything you hear about 5G points out how its higher data speeds will let you download videos or update your apps much more quickly. Well, that's one thing. Faster data is really helpful, but a different 5G benefit could actually be a bigger deal. Reducing network communication delays called latency. Latency is the time it takes to get a response to information sent. Lower latency could help 5G to deliver mobile networks that let us do entirely new things. It's not just modestly improve what we have already doing now. Possibilities include streaming mobile gaming, factory robots, assisting self-driving cars and other tasks demanding quick response. And basically all areas where today's 4G networks struggle or can't manage it. Especially for self-driving cars, a millisecond can save an accident. The possible use cases of 5G are really mind-blowing, but what will change in the near future for the average customers? Well, right now there are 4G hybrid solutions to boost your bandwidth, but with 5G, probably a fixed wireless will provide internet access to homes using wireless network technology rather than fixed lines. I also personally see a big use case for streaming. The next generation consoles are already rumored to be completely based on streaming. For streaming high graphics 3D games, you need not only fast bandwidth, but also low latency for the inputs from the controller. I've seen some demos at the IFA last year and I haven't noticed any lag. So just imagine that you never have to download or install a game again. The same goes for streaming content or games to your phone. But beside all that, the use cases for 5G are endless and I think the most life-changing things come with smart cities. The most discussed topic here are fully autonomous vehicles. When all the vehicles in a city are level 5 autonomy, which is the highest level possible, then the vehicles will be talking to all the other cars with no latency. But there is much more to come like dynamic lighting systems and maintenance drones, but all are thirsty for connectivity. So I was asking CCO consumer of Magenta, Mr. Jan Willem Staple, some questions about 5G in Austria and the future we are looking at. So Jan, how are you feeling today? Feeling very good. I'm really happy that uh, the word is out right now and that the new brand is launched and all our new portfolio is launched. So now we can really start selling. Now T-Mobile is now Magenta. So what's new and what is the benefit for the customer? Right, there's so many things are new, uh, but I'll be brief and in short on every part we've got something new or we've got multiple things new, but on mobile, for example, we now have the 5G ready tariffs with unlimited data. So that's really new and really cool. On uh, fixed or so on TV, we made it possible for every Austrian now to order TV. So it's possible to watch in all of Austria TV over our network as well. On internet, we now have one gigabit speed. Um, in Vienna, so for almost a million households, we now offer one gigabit of speed possible, and the rest Including of Austria, me. 500 Mbit. And on Magenta 1, which is our convergent offer, we now offer all possibilities for all customers to combine their uh, products and get better offers as well. All right, so you just mentioned one gigabit is like the maximum speed you can get right now, but yep. can I only get that in big cities like Vienna or do you plan to roll it out to like also um, countryside? Good question. Well, currently it's only available in Vienna um, where we have, and we have a footprint in 36% uh, of Austria where we've got cable. We will roll it out to all of these households in all of Austria. So that will be Graz, Innsbruck, Braubach, um and other cities where we have a presence as well. Unfortunately, we're not able to roll it out outside of this network, but there we have other options where you can go up to 250 uh, megabit. That's still pretty fast. And if you look into the future, when do you think will be 5G everywhere in Austria? 5G everywhere in Austria will probably take a bit of a longer time. So a couple of years, I would say, because it's quite expensive to roll it out. But we started as the first ones in Austria to roll out 5G. We've got the first 25 sites up. 
and working, which is important as well. So, uh, and we won't stop. We'll just go on. So if you look like 10 years into the future, where will 5G take us? What are the benefits for the consumers? I think where 5G will take us is, is probably partly unimaginable, uh, which means more or less that we are now talking about self-driving cars with 5G, for example. But if you look 10 years from now, which is quite a long time, we're done talking 2029, it could also be that we have like drones flying around which transport us, um, packages going all over Austria, self-delivery self and all those kind of things. So there are many options which we can hardly imagine at this moment. A bit more towards now is that we are able to uh, unlock the potential of lots of devices at the same time as well, critical communications and stuff. But 5G will really be something new and really be something else into the future as well. So it's probably unimaginable. Now you will say, that all sounds fine, but will it replace cable internet? I can tell you no, 5G is a very different attempt. 5G is super fast, that's why Magenta is now also offering their packages with unlimited data. It really doesn't make sense to count data within a network that lets you download enormous data in seconds. Magenta will actually offer different speed packages for 5G, which makes a lot of more sense. So these packages are called 5G Ready, because it will take more time to roll out the 5G network. The 5G network in Austria is already running in some locations, as Magenta told me. So Magenta has really made a big leap into the future. But when you want to buy a smartphone right now, you should really do some research, because there are two versions of 5G. You probably have already heard about it. There's non-standalone 5G, which is an early version of standalone 5G and is supported by early 2019 5G compatible smartphones. Though the 5G network will largely rely on existing 4G LTE infrastructure. Standalone 5G is slated to be released in the 2020 timeframe and is designed to be even more efficient than preceding LTE and the non-standalone variant. However, some smartphones may not be 5G standalone compatible. Anyway, in South Korea, 5G is now available everywhere. And so far, there are a lot of people already connected to 5G. So don't be scared about this new technology. There's plenty of fake news on the internet to scare people. But in fact, 5G will redefine the internet the same way 3G did in the past. Alright guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and I really hope that you now have some more information on where 5G comes from and what we can do with 5G. So there's a lot of misinformation on the internet, a lot of fake news on 5G, so be really careful when you do your research. Um, from my personal perspective, um, if you want to buy a 5G smartphone right now, um, as I would say, I would wait until the end of this year probably because there's a lot of stuff going on for smartphones with new chipsets and new generations. So right now we're really at the beginning of 5G, but as you have heard before, 5G is rolling out right now. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I will go to China very soon and I probably have the opportunity to check out a 5G test lab for you guys. So if you're interested in that, leave me your comments on what you want to see, what questions I should ask down below in the comments and I'll try to get them. All right guys, so big thanks for watching this video here until the end. As always, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I will catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.